edition of the OmniTalk Spotlight Series, the series that highlights the people, the companies, and the technologies that are shaping the future of retail. I'm your host, Chris Walton. And I'm Ann Mazenga. And today's conversation, we are going to explore how social media can become an even more powerful tool for retailers and brands than it is already. And to have that conversation with us, I am pleased to welcome Akshay Madani, the CEO and co-founder of Scrollmark, and also, sadly, probably against my better judgment, a Cal Berkeley bear. Oh. Akshay, welcome to OmniTalk. Chris, and it's great to be on. And Chris, looks like you were at Stanford at the exact same time I was at Berkeley. Oh really? My oh yeah. my God, wow. This you know, the rivalry maybe, begins. So, okay, get only it out. Years apart, you know? How many, 20 years ago, I was like, wait, I was like, I was like, you threw me for a little bit. I almost went speechless there, which almost never happens on a podcast. I was like, what? No way. So yeah, 20 years apart. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you for aging me, my friend. Yes. Thank All right. You. Get your, get your rivalry stuff out of the way before we start the podcast. Just go ahead. Let's do it. Actually tell us about your time there. Give you Chris know, some, some grief. You know, Chris, actually, I have a funny story about that. So the big game always fell on my birthday when we were back in college. And, you know, uh, we lost basically my first three years. And for my 21st birthday, All right. you know what? I don't want to show up to this. Like, I don't want to go to Stanford to see us lose. So, you know, we just kind of stayed at Cal. And that was the one year we won. And, oh, man, I, I hated it. I was like, I wish I was there, you know? And you missed oh. it. Oh, that's too oh, bad. Yeah. I think if memory serves, we won all four years. I was there. So, and we won the hundredth big game, which I was actually in attendance for too. So hmm, I don't know what that says about things, but, uh, but, and let's get this interview going. Let's get this interview show on the road. So I would love to get a little bit of your background before we start. We know you're a Cal bear, but um, let's hear a little bit about your background, Akshay, and a little bit about um, how you were led to found Scrollmark. You know, before Scrollmark, I was at Facebook and, you know, was very lucky to work on many different parts of the business, you know, parts of the core business, such as feed ranking and comment moderation, but also on emerging projects like, you know, Web3 and the youth team. Um, mm but really spent most of my time there on the creators team, really helping brands and influencers connect to consumers through okay. Facebook pages. Yeah. And one of the big projects I worked on was top fans. Uh, how this worked is that if you commented a ton on any one specific page, so let's say like Steph Curry or Fashion Nova. Sure. Yeah. Okay. You'd get a notification being like, you're a top fan of Steph Curry, click here to claim your badge. And the next time you comment, there would be a little badge next to your name that says top fans. And, you know, the project really blew up, right? You know, moved all the most important metrics at Facebook. The team went from me to around 10 people just working on this small product. And, you know, that experience kind of taught me something really valuable. You know, it's kind of intuitive, but I guess I had to go through the lesson to learn it which is that people want to be recognized, right? Like you think yeah. about this badge, it doesn't really give them anything. Um, it really doesn't cost Facebook anything. It's really the virtual equivalent of a good job sticker. <laughs> people are crazy for it, right? Old star, it's right? amazing right. what hits with, with people, right? Like yeah. just being recognized. Like remember the mayors of like, you could be the mayor of a coffee shop and people would like go there all the time. Like, yeah, this makes sense. Like when you are passionate about a topic, you want to be the top fan. So, so how did that like develop then further? Like you just, you found this to be true of people and their commenting and their adoration for individuals. How did that lead to what scroll mark is today? You know, I think I asked myself, like, how do we really help brands, you know, do this better? Like one of the things I was mm -hmm. noticing is that, you know, the brand focus on organic social was going down year after year, right? It was turning more into um, uh, a focus on performance marketing. And I saw this as an opportunity to really bring organic social back into the purview of brands and make it something that drives value for them. Okay. And that's kind of how Scrollmark started. So what is it, what exactly does it do? So, so that's interesting. So you're kind of, you're kind of playing on a couple of things there. So I want to make sure we roll it back. So you're saying that you know, the focus is on paid marketing because you can capture the ROI on that from a marketer's perspective, depending on how you attribute it. But there's the whole play of 
there's there's that and then there's the social organic side of social media too where the brands are doing things and they're getting interaction and people are commenting and liking so so how does that play into what you actually do at scrollmark yeah so what scrollmark does is that you know we're a social marketing automation platform right we leverage yeah. channels such as facebook messenger and twitter dms instagram dms tiktok dms and now very soon even linkedin dms to really? be a new channel where you can yeah. kind of reach consumers and have them, you know, responded to when they're discovering your brand, right? The heart of the platform is really this Zapier style flow builder, right? Where, you know, when somebody comments, you can kind of respond back to them and build these lead funnels, ask for their email or their phone number, you know, send them out to your website to make a purchase. Um, that's really what scroll marks all about. So, so if I get you right, in its simplest terms here, what you're saying is like, I see an ad from Walmart and I, let's say, or I see a post, not even an ad. Let's see, I see a post from something about Walmart, something attributed to Walmart. I like it or I comment on it. Then you say you have the built-in automation where you can take those likes or those comments and then direct message the consumer with say an offer or a, hey, I saw you like this, whatever message you want, you can tailor it to whatever needs you want that's essentially what you're doing that's exactly right you know like if you if you imagine the workflow you'd comment on something that walmart has and then they'd reach out by message and be like you know hey chris thanks for commenting you know we'd love to stay in touch can we get your email address right and you'd send their email address this would be captured by scroll mark and then sent out to walmart crm so that way they can continue to run email marketing plays on you Right. And I think one of the really, really cool things here is that, you know, we do this not just on organic, but as you mentioned, on paid posts as well. Right. So on organic, you know, there was really never a way to measure a ROAS, right? There was no ad spend. Um, and this is finally a way for you to say, this is the return I'm getting on all the work I'm doing on organic social. But then on paid and influencer media, which we also support, this is a really, really easy way to boost ROAS by just responding to people who are commenting on that ad. And right. again, getting visibility into what, like the, the value that those influencers are providing, not just on the one post and the views, but really like how, what kind of engagement are we getting from this post? I imagine, right? Exactly. Exactly. Like, you know, you can use this to essentially attribute, you know, visits that are coming from an influencer campaign and use that to inform your spend as to which influencers are actually more effective at driving traffic to your website. Yeah. Right. So like you're saying, like, so you use the example of an email, but like to Anne's point, like in, in essence, you could use the technology that you're discussing to say, like, create promo codes per influencer and automate a comment or a like on an influencer's post and then say, hey, you like this, use this code from Kim Kardashian 20 to get 20% off on whatever it is that you liked or commented on Scams, or something yeah. else from the yeah. brand, right? Is that essentially what you're saying? So that's to today actually how brands do it, right? They'll, mm -hmm. let's say they're working with, you know, Kim Kardashian, right? Like they'll, they'll say, here's the code for you, Kardashian 20. You know, yeah, they'll do it, it broadly, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, you know, right. post it and anybody who uses it will kind of attribute to you. Yeah. Um, but that's obviously, you know, kind of poses a problem because you really don't have an individual level of tracking and attribution. So now imagine that instead, anytime you know somebody comments on that specific influencer post, they get a DM with a personalized email. Right. It doesn't yeah. feel special and unique compared exactly. to what you're talking about. It doesn't feel like the gold star like you're talking about, right? Exactly. And you know, one of the really cool things that we're starting to build out for our clients, you know, speaking of the gold star are social loyalty campaigns, right? Say you comment five times in a month, you should not get 10% off. You should get 25, right? Um, right. And oh, interesting. you're resharing something to your story, like, you know, 10 times a month. Hey, you're a huge fan and you're really doing a lot of work for this. You're a micro influencer, essentially. And we want to reward you by giving a free product or by giving you a higher percentage off, giving you loyalty points in our kind of, in our, in our loyalty system. So that's one of the things that we're working on. I think one of the other things that's really interesting is this new strategy that we're pioneering called 
social direct response, right? We've seen direct response in so many other formats. You think about those TV ads where it's like, hey, call now. We're going to give you 50% mm, off. Mm -hmm. This is a limited time offer, right? You can do the same thing in social and it works way, way better where you're like, hey, if you comment on this in the next three days, we're going to be giving you like 25% off your next quarter. Um, limited, time, limited time offer, comment now. And this is two things, right? First of all, you're able to actually like track and attribute the conversions you're getting off social. But secondly, because you're getting so many comments, like the way that these feed ranking algorithms work is that the more engagement you get, the more it's shown to, right? The more people see that post. So you have this positive feedback loop where you know a lot of people are commenting, you're getting a lot more impressions. Those new people are now also commenting and you know your page is getting a lot more impressions than it used to. Actually, I love this because I think that there's, it's almost like the paid and organic kind of response from the consumers too. Like on one hand, I just imagine like it takes a lot for, I think most consumers to want to put something on a brand's page to like comment on a brand's page. But I can just imagine now doing this and like the surprise and delight that happens when I get a comment from my the brand that I'm tagging or following or whatever it might be right. to be to be told like, thank you, like to have an engagement. It's so rare that you get an engagement back. But now you're like creating this feedback loop, whether it's something that you're probing, you know, your your consumers as a brand or it just happening organically where you're like, hey, we saw you like that recognition is something going back to what you were saying earlier. I, I have to know, like, how is this working? What are, what kind of results are you starting to see? Um, do you have any other case studies you can provide just to kind of further give, give the listeners some context into what can happen when you deploy something like this? Yeah, totally. I think, you know, and to, uh, to your point, people, they're very surprised by this and they're also very curious. They'll see posts like this and just to see what happens, they'll like engage and leave a comment just to see, <laughs> hey, what's the DM that's gonna come in? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and the surprising thing here is that it it works really, really well. Like, you know, you ready for this? It's 90% open rates, like 15 to 25% conversion and reply rates, right? Holy and shit. Of the DMs. What? 90% open rates? That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, you think about it, I open basically every yeah. message that comes in on Instagram or Facebook, right? Right, like, right. right. Especially yeah, if it's from a brand that you engaged with or you started the engagement with too. Right. And especially if it happens right in that moment, like, you know, I commented and then 30 seconds later, I'm still on Instagram. Right. So yeah. yeah, got that message. Yeah. Especially if it's validated from like the Walmart account on Instagram or the target <laughs> account on Instagram or Twitter with the check marks or whatever the heck they do now, or X, whatever it's called. Right. Like you're just going to open that. That it makes yeah. sense intuitively. Right. And yeah, absolutely. So, so uh, do you have any, like, are there any clients that you're working with actually that you can share with us, like where this has happened specifically? Uh, one of the case studies we had that worked really, really well was yeah. with uh, Solana, right? Which was a web three platform. They ran this on Twitter, you know, obviously for web three, uh, Twitter is really, really important. And, you know, one of the things we saw is that you know, they literally didn't even make an offer. They were like, if you want to book a call with our sales team, right? They were trying to get people to use their blockchain for building games. Yeah. Uh, if you want to book a call with our sales team, retweet this, right? It blew up. It got like 40,000 impressions when on average they were getting like five to 10,000 impressions. And, you know, they got a ton of calls booked with their sales team. It was, it was crazy. They didn't wow. even make any special offer. They didn't give any discount. You know, they just said, if you want to do this, just, you know, retweet this. Yeah. Wow. All right. So let's shift gears a little bit here. So one of the things that I know is a passionate subject for Anne particularly, because I've talked to her about this on numerous, uh, numerous uh, weekly podcasts that we do each and every week is that, you know, marketing budgets are tight here. Um, and marketing and particularly social media marketing managers are the first people generally that, you know, are on the chopping block or their jobs are at risk here as, as budgets starting to tighten up. So how does what you're describing, you know, change the role of the average social media and marketing manager, you know, at a given retailer, or does it at all change it? Like, what's your yeah, take on that? Question. Yeah, I, I think Chris, that's a great question. It's something, one of the reasons I started this company, I'm pretty passionate about that, right? One of the things that I've always heard from, you know, when I was at Facebook and now also at Scrollmark is that 
social really sits out on an island, right? It's yeah. often kind of given to the most junior marketer at the company. Mm -hmm. um, people think, oh, social is a young person's game. Right. Um, and they don't have the same tools that everyone else in the marketing department has, right? Like if you look at a you know paid media specialist, they can point, especially in the digital world, you can you can point to a specific number, the ROAS, and be like, if this is good, you know, I should be, I should keep my job and I should be promoted, all that right. sort of stuff. Right. Yeah, I'm making this much money for you, company, right? Yeah. yeah, right, exactly. Right. If you're like a CRM marketer, you're an email or SMS marketer, easy to do the same thing. You can look at conversion off of you know the emails and SMSs that you're running and say that this is how much revenue I'm bringing in. If you're in SEO, you can look at things like quick rates and ranking and all that sort of stuff to be like, you know, this is how I can show I'm doing really, really good uh, at what I do. Um, and when you're in social, you point to likes and comments. This is how many likes I drove for the company. This is how many comments I drove for right. the company. Right. And, you know, you go to your boss and they're like, they don't care, right? Like they don't care about likes and comments. Like they, they want to see what revenue you're bringing in. And yes. scroll marks really kind of the way to, to make that happen finally, to point to a number and be like, this is how I can show that I'm bringing in revenue for this company. Well, actually there's, it kind of reminds me of something, Chris, like we were talking about this earlier, as far as like customer service call centers were are concerned, like this used to be, it used to be just solving the problem. It used to be, you were using direct messages to like answer questions that people have, but now it's turning into, this is another sales opportunity. This yep. is an opportunity for exactly you to right. bring in new revenue. Actually, are you seeing that happen as well? Like where you're not only able to gather information from these very engaged consumers, but you're also able to now turn that into a sales opportunity and to really understand how you can monetize your social engagement? Yeah, no, I think we've we've seen kind of a a shift in how our platform is being used, especially by brands and retailers in the last two to three kind of months, right? You know, wow. initially, okay. obviously, it was mostly just lead funnels, right? You know, just right. gathering the email. Um, but then they realized right. that, hey, like the email has a 30% like open rate. Mm -hmm. This right now is being open, like 90% right. yes. open rates. We should send them to our website, right? Right. And we have catalog integrations, right? Where people mm -hmm. will upload their catalog and, you know, the Instagram Messenger is a very, very rich experience with carousels and buttons and quick mm -hmm. replies and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, people will literally send the items that they think that this person will like based on the post that was commented on. And then people mm -hmm. will click through and actually make the purchase, right? You know, you will see a ton of comments on social, which are like, I want. That's that's the comment, right? Like, yeah. If they right. want, you should send them the link right. so that they right. buy it, right? Something's like, keeping them from buying, help them out, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Your point, your point is right. Like it's if you're thinking about this as a CRM augmentation tool only, you're missing the point of this whole mm -hmm. discussion. Like that's a point of it, but it's not the whole thing, right? Exactly. Exactly. I think it's really instrumental in the way that brands look at social, right? Like, you know, we've seen brands kind of across industries that don't spend a lot of money, they run very cash lean and they use social as their main channel to reach new consumers. So you think about like Wendy's and QSR, Fashion Nova in retail, you think about uh, Ryanair in travel, right? And Duolingo in consumer tech. And they've really done a good job of crafting a brand voice and reaching out to consumers and you know, basically getting a lot of earned media through social. But mm -hmm. I think the downside here is that, you know, CMOs have the shortest tenure of the C-suite, right? Mm -hmm. They don't have often the time to see a very well-crafted social strategy pan out. Um, and when you don't use a tool like Scrollmark, I think, first of all, you're leaving money on the table, right? You're not pushing for conversions. You're not getting people to engage with you more and you're leaving money on the table. And I think the second thing is that you're not getting credit for the business that you're driving in the meanwhile until you become this like recognized brand in social, right? Um, and 
kind of by implementing this tool, you can justify a higher spend in social. You can justify crafting your own brand voice on social and really mm -hmm. investing into that. So that's, that's kind of the vision for how we can kind of make social, especially organic social, a first party player in this digital marketing like uh, department for most yeah. retailers. Well, actually, let's talk about like how you make this come to life. Like what gets you excited when you work with a client for the first time? They're implementing Scrollmark. Like talk us through the process and what you what they see that you, that gets you like ready and excited to bring them on board and continue to show them the value that they can get from this partnership. You know, often I feed off of their excitement. I've been on so many calls, typically at least half my calls every day is people who look at this and especially if they've been doing social for a long time, yes, they yeah. immediately get it. It's like this light bulb moment for them. And they're like, where has this been all my life? And that's really exciting, obviously. Like as a salesperson, any salesperson will tell you they've been on enough shitty calls, right? So <laughs> when you get on a call with a with a client and or a prospective client, and they look at something, they're like, holy shit, you know, that really gets you going. Yeah, um, yeah. And that's really, you know, it's exciting for me. You know, you think about, you know, companies that are really industry leading, there's entire sets of people who have built their career on it. Like you go to a, like a CRM marketer, like an email marketer, they're going to tell you, I can't live without Braze or Klaviyo, right? Like it just unless you give me that tool, I can't come work for you, right? Mm -hmm. And I think this is going to be that tool in, you know, five years for social marketers, right? Like until right. you give me this tool, I'm not going to be able to show you that I'm, I'm valuable and that I can really drive revenue for you. Um, so, yeah. So, so actually how easy is it to actually implement? And then if, if retailers or brands are listening, you know, and they're, you know, intrigued by what you've said, what's the best way for them to start and dip their toe in the water with you? Yeah, we, we offer a 30 day free trial. And one of the reasons we do this is that we're really confident that once you see it, you're going to want to stay. Um, it's really, really easy to set up. You know, we have kind of a 30 minute onboarding session. It takes around like 30 seconds to connect all of your social accounts up. Uh, you know, we're official partners of, you know, Facebook and Twitter and, and TikTok, all basically all kind of the platforms that we work with. So none of this is really putting your account health at risk, which is obviously really, really important to the retailers. And, you know, make sure that the connections are all kind of kosher. And the beautiful thing here is that we also offer kind of a managed surface on top of, you know, the regular software op offering. And we do that completely for free. You know, we want to make sure that you succeed. We know that we've been doing this for a while, but this is your first time playing around with a tool like this. So we give you kind of the right automations and the right posts to make to really get the most value out of this tool. Um, every week we do a quick audit of your account and kind of give you, hey, this is what we think you should be doing next week. So Got yeah. It's consultative too. There's a consultative end to it too. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And if if you want to get started, just reach out to me. Awesome. Well, that was going to be my next question to end on was like, you know, <laughs> if, if people are interested and they want to learn more, which we ask most of our guests, like what's, what's the best way for them to do that? hundred percent. Email me. Akshay at scrollmark.com. Um, <laughs> okay. And yeah. how do you spell Akshay for those listening? A-K-S-H-A-Y at scrollmark.com. Awesome. Awesome. And then you're also available on LinkedIn, right? That's how you found I me, I think, initially, right? Yep. I am. And reach out to me on LinkedIn, Akshay Madhani, and you'll find me and we'll go from there. Awesome. Oh. Awesome. Well, I can always tell when Ann does a podcast and she's like, and, the, and she's like, okay, this is cool. Right, Ann? Like yeah. that, that's all you're feeling as you listen to oh, this, Oh, right? absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I wish I, I wish I had this, Akshay. You're right. This is something that as a marketer at a major enterprise Retailer, it would have been real nice to have this sort of visibility. Um, so I'm sure there's lots of people listening who are going to be really excited to to connect with you and just learn more about how they get this rolling. 100%. And, you know, I think the story of social is definitely not done yet, right? We're seeing no, not even so much stuff, especially with retail, with TikTok shops really yeah. going up these days. We're really looking at kind of the next generation of driving commerce through social. 
-hmm. And you want a tool like this to really stand out and make sure that your cons consumers are engaged with you and they're coming back for repeat purchases and they're discovering you even for the first purchase, right? So yeah, especially yeah. when search is happening on these platforms too. I mean, I think the ability to just be mm, able to point, more quickly Anne. connect with your consumers and give them an offer, just you, you have to be prepared for that engagement to be happening on social. And this is a great way to do it, Akshay. So really excited, excited that we could have you on the show today. Um, Chris, that wraps us up. It does. Yeah, man. Thank you, Akshay Madani, for sitting down with us, the CEO and founder of Scrollmark. Thanks to everyone for listening in. And as always, on behalf of Anne and myself, be careful out there.